black is the color of death. Chopin's funeral march is written in a B minor key. Moreover, almost all funeral music is written in minor. In a silent procession, we accompany our beloved ones to their final resting places. We take two minutes of silence to commemorate those who have died. And I, I talked about dying and death for over several hundred hours. My name is Gijsbert van Esch, I'm a journalist. I work for a daily newspaper in the Netherlands, NRC Handelsblad. In the last two years, I made interviews with more than 100 people. Far mo the far most of them were in the last weeks or months of their lives. They have all passed away. I know what your feelings are about the subject of dying and death. It has been examined in opinion polls, representative to larger groups of population. Only two or three people out of ten are able to talk about dying freely. Seven or eight are out of ten consider it to be a black hole, keeping a safe distance, remaining silent to man's final and inevitable destiny. For inevitable it is. In this hall, we are with, um, I think, 500 um, of people, and two or three of you, according to statistics, will not celebrate Christmas this year. Only we don't know who they are. Um, how can we prepare to this um, end of life? Let me introduce you to some people who might be able to help you. Recently they died, um, or they still live, but in the perspective that their life will end in the very near future. The end was or is near, and they did or do it their way. This is Lane. He was almost 70 years old when he died one year, died one year ago. I will never forget Lane, for he lived according to the golden principle of keep it simple. He never got married, he got no children, he was a sailor and he had seen the whole world. And as a factory worker, he had earned enough to retire around his 60th birthday, making long bicycle trips in the polder <coughs> landscape he lived. He said, okay, this was my life, and I enjoyed every day of it. It's over now, he said. I don't fear death, because there's nothing after this life. Over and out. This is Esther. She's 40-something now. She's a mother of two young boys. She doesn't keep it simple. In contrary, she's fighting to live as long as possible, being affected by bone cancer, <coughs> and with success. She already lives longer now than was expected before. Inspired by the movie The Bucket List, with Jack Nicholson in a leading role, she made a list of things both tiny and vivacious, that she wanted to do before she died. So she went swimming with dolphins in the Caribbean Sea. She traveled to Norway to see the famous Nordic light in polar nights, and she re revealed to be a daredevil, experiencing the sensation of upsilon from the Euromast, a 300 feet high tower in Rotterdam. After the interview with Esther was published in my newspaper, I got an email from Elizabeth. She died, died last year in September at the age of 57. She told me, the last thing I want to do now is doing spectacular things. She quoted Voltaire in his famous novel Candide ou l'optimisme. Candide traveled from continent to continent to reach the best world of all worlds. He did not find it anywhere until he met a simple peasant who handed him the key to happiness, saying, Il faut cultiver notre jardin, which means when all people would make their own place the best place on earth, this world would be the best world of all worlds. Elizabeth gave me an example of pure wisdom 
concentrated in a simple line, in a metaphor. And that's what René did too. He is a philosopher by profession. He lost a leg because of cancer and palliative uh, care helped him to endure his deadly disease. He asked me, do you know what the origin is of the word patience? It's strange from the old Greek language. It's related to words as passion, patience, passive. In other words, being a patient, you must have patience. You have to hold your passion. <coughs> Are we ready to jump to conclusion? To be a peaceful patient by having patience, to be as passive as you can, is that the way, the best way to await <coughs> your death in harmony? Perhaps. But what about Laura? She was 31 when she died, one year ago. A few months before she passed away, she told me, I am the happiest girl on earth. She and her boyfriend made um, a plan to give a positive vibe to the news, the news that she would uh, not only live for a few months longer. Their wedding party became their, her farewell party and she enjoyed every minute of it. She wrote me in an, inter in an email after the great day. You might wonder, what can we learn from these five people, from their stories, their remarkable different ways to cope with death and dying? I ask you to think it over for yourself. I would almost suggest that we would keep silence for two minutes to give it some deeper th thoughts. But sorry, two minutes would take too long in a TED talk to keep silence in the speedy way we live. So let me help you with, with two impressions that inspire me after 100 interviews about dying and death. The first one is people really do it all their own different ways when they, when they know the end is near. People working in the field of healthcare and cure and of cure and care are used to work with protocols, with standard files, with tough time schedules. White is the color of health care. It's the color of hospital beds. It's the color of medicine boxes. There's something going wrong with the PowerPoint, but never mind. Um, I wouldn't dare say that the color white symbolizes the uniform way in which all patients are uh, treated. But in general, I would say we, healthy people, medical people not excluded, could listen better to the stories of dying people, to show more patience with patients, because there are some more uh, aspects to the final stage of life, social and emotional questions, spiritual fears and reliefs. Which brings me to my second and final ID, being most people prefer not to die alone. I told you about Lane and Esther, about Elizabeth, René and Laura. I could tell you about the people you see now, there are they. They all recently died. Most of them were, all in their own ways, at ease with the perspective of death, because they were surrounded by really caring people regardless of their relationships as partners, children, friends, colleagues, neighbors, doctors, or nursing people. Listening to the stories of dying people, listen, please listen to the stories of dying people. Ask them questions. Don't give them, them your answers. Just listen to them and be with them. Please don't stress too much on the principles and protocols of medical care. Care for them, take care of them in a respectful, and mindful dialogue, being part of their peer group, being a true friend, being a buddy. Il faut cultiver notre jardin. When we all take care of dying, when we learn to talk about dying, we make this world the best world of all worlds. Thank you very much. <laughs>